Hi, this is Dian Wajali. Um, we're here today with someone who is very special to me because every year I get to meet him like once a couple times a year and it's no other than the Deputy Mayor of the City of Markham, the Mr. Jack Heath. Oh, welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here, Deanne. Jack, I'm so super excited. First, I want to say thank you so much um, for honoring us and everything we do in the city of Markham and giving us the opportunity to host, you know, the annual flag raising there for the Trinidad and Tobago. I have to put that piece in here, definitely so, because without your cooperation yourself personally, who you know, you normally speak yes, at the podium right. as well, and the amazing staff that you have there with the mayor of Markham and everyone else, I want to thank you so much on behalf of NDPI TV. I enjoy it. I'll tell you one of the reasons why I'm more prominent in that one. Mm -hmm. The mayor usually takes part of August off. Yes, so I'm I know. acting mayor. Yes. And so I want to help out. Besides, I've been to Trinidad and Tobago yes. uh, two or three times. Yes. And I love it. So yes. it's wonderful for me. It's always lovely to see you in your red and white checkered shirt, striped shirt as well, and raising the flag with us. And you know, that. Uh, you know, that will lead up to what we're going to be talking about today, um, about, you know, the secret behind the success in, in people as a mentor, as a leaders in the community, um, you know, for philanthropists and all those people I will be speaking to. But for you today, we want to talk about some of the things that you do and how we see you as a leader and a mentor and some of the secrets behind it because you just don't wake up one day and say I'm a deputy mayor, city of Markham. And you've been there for a couple of no, years. No, I've been there for seven years, I think, now. Seven years. And you're going to have another seven years or 20 years? I don't think so, <laughs> Deanne. Um, I'm closer to retirement than I am to the start of my elected career, so I certainly know I'm here for another three years, maybe seven, but that's it. Does the mayor know that? <laughs> well, I think the mayor's going to run forever, and he's a great mayor, and yes, he is. He's uh, I like being deputy mayor, mm -hmm. and uh, that's good enough for me. So what are the roles as a deputy, we'll talk about you personally in a moment, but as we talk about the deputy mayor, what is the role of a deputy mayor? It depends what municipality you're in. Mm -hmm. In Toronto, Toronto has um, three or four deputy mayors, and the mayor gives each of them a responsibility, an area of responsibility. Mm -hmm. In Markham, actually, we have regional councillors, and they're elected across the municipality, mm -hmm. and as a result, the person who places first of the four elected gets to be deputy mayor. So it, there's no specific responsibility attached to the job. It's a result of the number of votes you get. I'm not chosen by the mayor, I'm actually appointed by council as mm -hmm. the number one regional council. So my job is as I choose it. So were you ever um, regional council, is what you're saying? Yeah, for you one have term. For one term, which is, hold on, two years, three years? Uh, three years, it was three at years. the time, it's now four years. But in 03 is when I got elected regional council, but I wasn't the number one regional council. Mm -hmm. And in 08, when I became deputy mayor. And so I've been elected deputy mayor in 10 and 14. So there is a process. Is that oh, what you're yeah. saying, a process? So what does a regional council do? What did you do when you were regional council? Well, we sit on regional council up in Newmarket, York Region Council. Mm -hmm. We talk about big things, um, the major roads. Mm -hmm. The road that most people live on is probably a local road. Mm -hmm. That's not a regional road. But Kennedy or Warden or what have you, that's a regional road, and the responsibility is the region of York. Mm -hmm. So the major sewers, the major water pipes, they're all region of York. We have a region of York has no parks, uh, all the parks are local, but we handle economic development and major planning. If you decide you wanted to uh, expand your house by three feet at the back, that's local, that's Markham. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a subdivision of 200 or 2,000 in a very large area, that's probably regional. Well, I also want to congratulate you because now the town of Markham is now the city of Markham. That's right. Did you have a part to play in that? I'm sure you a did. A little bit. <laughs> I opposed it at the end for a while. Mm -hmm. The reason um, it was the town of Markham mm -hmm. is because it had three local communities. Mm -hmm. It had uh, uh, Unionville and mm -hmm. the village of Markham mm -hmm. and Thornhill. And then there was a huge area between. And then slowly they'd be developed so they're one. It still had that uh, feeling of a small town. Mm -hmm. And after a while, in the around 10 or 11, we began thinking uh, maybe it should be a city. Maybe it should be a city. And we looked around. We were the largest town in Canada. You are. I was going to say you are like, expanding tremendously, especially with a lot of ethnic groups there as well. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so we decided uh, around, uh, I guess it was spring of 2012, mm -hmm. we were going to test it. We said to the community, we're going to go out and become uh, uh, the city. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. There weren't many people who objected. And the new community, the, especially the Chinese and the Tamil mm -hmm. community and others, they thought we were already a city in mm -hmm. one case, in many cases, and in others, when we would, did economic development in China, for example, mm -hmm. they couldn't understand how we're not a city with 300 odd thousand people. Mm -hmm. So it was hindrance to our economic development. So I said, I think I'm, I'll switch my vote, I'll vote for the city. And I'm quite glad I did. So let's talk about Jack. Heath. Let's talk Forget about Jack. Forget this for the deputy. You mean me? Yes, talk about uh, you. But okay. the deputy mayor part for side. So let's talk about you. You know, um, when you were growing up, who your heroes are and who your mentors and leaders, because we are talking about leaders and mentors. But in order to get to where you are, you had to have someone who inspired, people who inspired you, you look up to. And it can be personal, it mm -hmm. can be famous people, it can be so many. So let's talk about that. <laughs> so where you became. You're going to yeah. find out fairly quickly. I'm a capital L <laughs> liberal because I was very inspired by the father. Mm -hmm. That is the father of the current Prime Minister, mm -hmm. uh, Pierre Trudeau, mm -hmm. and uh, I was actually one of the delegates at his leadership convention. Okay. I went there, I uh, was in university, and I supported uh, Trudeau, mm -hmm. and I was the only one. All the other students uh, in university at the time who were going to that convention were supporting Turner. Mm -hmm. But I was the only one. I just said, he's the right guy. Trudeau was the right guy. And uh, he won that convention, mm -hmm. became Prime Minister for 16 years. And the joy, I mean, I, I, at municipal level, you don't. There's no party politics, mm -hmm. certainly in Markham, and you work with everybody. And I don't, uh, I don't have any role as a liberal or conservative or as a green or NDP or what have you. But I did enjoy writing on Facebook about a week and a half ago when uh, Justin Trudeau got sworn in. Mm -hmm. I specifically referred to such and such uh, was uh, speaking to Prime Minister Trudeau. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to use the first name. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to say again, Prime Minister Trudeau. Mm -hmm. And so I had a great joy of that. I always thought uh, he modernized Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, son is going to, in my view, do the same. And so, uh, yes, you found the one that I like a lot. Uh, is there anybody else that inspired you in your life as a mentor? Probably my father. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my father was the treasurer of Maple Leaf Gardens for many years. Oh, yes. And uh, I was there when we uh, won the Stanley Cup three mm -hmm. times in the building. And um, he was a quiet man, but he worked very hard. He, uh, he was a coach of hockey. Uh, he was a great golfer. All of these things that he did much better than either of his sons, me mm -hmm. or my brother. And uh, he used to golf his age at, uh, at uh, 80, so he was a, he was a very good golfer. And so Len Heath, I'm, my second name's Len, mm -hmm. and uh, so he's, he's my mentor, he's the guy who I think about a lot. He passed away at 96, so they're going to have, if, if it's anything inherited, they're going to have me for quite a while. <laughs> That's yeah. what I said to you before, <laughs> just to, to me and know that you cannot retire <laughs> as well. As a, you have this public figure in the city. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a recognizable face. At least it's for me as well. I'm getting so used to everybody's faces now in the city of Markham. What do you see as a leader? You know, you are a leader and you are a mentor. We all know that. We all leaders and mentors. We all teachers and students at the same time, correct? Mm -hmm. In the community, what, how do you work within the community to show that you are a leader and a mentor? And, you know, people, I'm sure, look up to you. I mean, you have an amazing assistant, too, so I'm sure she looks up to you as well. And they'll take something away from that, working with you. Well, I don't like all this adoration. I can tell you that's <laughs> not my personality. I think it's most important to help people find the answer themselves. Mm -hmm. um, community groups, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, various groups that are maybe uh, ratepayer groups or in charge of the, the local building as the uh, appointed committee. Help them find the answer themselves. People will respect the answer. People will follow mm -hmm. that lead if they can find it and understand it and believe in it themselves. I think that's the best way to run a society. Absolutely. That people 
responsible for it. We were talking to uh, someone just recently here in your office <laughs> about home ownership. Yes. I mean, home ownership to me is one of the foundations of society. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of we really want everybody to have the chance to own a home. Well, when they understand how important it is to them and their family, that's when they're going to do it. And that's when they're going to take that initiative. Others can say, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I get a lot of should-haves or mm -hmm. whatever, or need to or whatever. When you understand yourself uh, in running a society or your own life, then you're going to do it. And you're going to do it better than anyone else can help them do it. Mm -hmm. They will do it because they want to do it. So let's take that, let's go into that for a moment. And you are very passionate about the whole ownership, obviously, as we just mentioned. But at the same time, I know you had some views as to why that was, and why that is so important in the, in, in the community. Mm -hmm. Let's go a little bit deeper into that too as well, because it's something you're passionate about. And being in the city of Markham, how it helps develop and build. But you're mm -hmm. also helping people build up resources and assets and so forth. And that's what leaders do and mentors and say, okay, this is something you should think about. Well, it, home ownership. I, you know, there's several things that mm -hmm. I, uh, I think are very important. Home ownership is very important because when you have own your own home, mm -hmm. you have a stake in that mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. uh, you worry about whether or not the uh, the city's going to raise the taxes mm -hmm. by too much instead mm -hmm. of let's say one or two percent. They're going by five or six, and I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. You worry about your whole community. You worry about your neighborhood. You worry about it beautifying the community. Mm -hmm. One of the things I work on a lot is parks, mm -hmm. and uh, you will appreciate that. Not only does the park down the street uh, uh, help the environment and the environment around where you and your family live, it also improves your property values. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have a stake in that. So ensuring that the park is lovely, ensuring that the park uh, has more trees than, than three years ago when you're planting trees, all those come out of home ownership. The, the foundation of municipal government, in my view, is home ownership. So, uh, there are many aspects. I can keep mm -hmm. on going. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I've worked on is waste management, improving the waste management system. And if you have a good waste management system, then you don't have garbage running all over the streets, mm -hmm. lowering your property values where mm -hmm. you own the home, mm -hmm. etc., etc. All of those things. Um, the waste management system in Markham is one of the best in Canada. And we hear it all the time from our residents. Uh, they're very proud of that. They're very proud of where they live, and they're very proud of, in effect, the systems we put in place for the city of Markham. So it's what where are the they systems? Live. What have you put in there for the, for the city of Markham? Tell us some of the systems, since it is the best one, according to you. Well, oh, the city of Markham and the, the residents. So what have you done? <laughs> and as a leader, this is what you're doing to yeah. make it better for everybody. So let's talk about that. About three years ago, four years ago, I went to a convention, mm -hmm. Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board of directors. It was in Halifax. And the waste management system partially introduced by the government down there uh, in the rural areas, not the city, and mm -hmm. the city is coming on board now, uh, was clear bags mm -hmm. so that you had your recycling, your blue box, and when yes. you put out your garbage, mm -hmm. the stuff that's going to the landfill or the incinerator had to be in a clear bag. Mm -hmm. Now, why was that? It had to be in a clear bag because we wanted to make sure you were sorting correctly. Mm -hmm. And we, we also knew that if you weren't sorting correctly, your next door neighbor is going to see you put all those pop cans in the clear bag. And they say, what are you doing? She's not doing her job. She's not working within for our community. We well, had spies out there. Uh, well, no. <laughs> Social pressure is by far the best system for waste management. I know. It's by far the best. So I imported that to Markham. Uh -huh. Our waste diversion is now 81 to 82%. By far the best in Canada, by 10 points or higher mm -hmm. uh, over most other municipalities, way above Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, way above uh, most of the rest of the GTA. And that's partly because we introduced, I went to Halifax and toured Nova Scotia, saw the clear bags, brought them to Markham mm -hmm. and introduced them in April of 13, I believe it was. That's amazing. Uh, what are some of the other projects you've worked on as a leader there to make it better for the city of Markham? And a lot of people traveling to Markham to this, seeing this. So I want you to think it's not only in the city of Markham, it's also people going and coming out to pass and through would mm -hmm. see this. Because I mean, we're right next to Markham, pretty much. The, yes, yes. Toronto is um, Markham South, is mm -hmm. uh, what, what mm -hmm. I tend to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're introducing, you haven't seen it, you wouldn't see it yet. 
but it was legislation that was approved by the Parliament in the spring for the Rouge National Urban Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be in the east end of Markham and the east end of Toronto and a little bit up now into Durham. Mm -hmm. And Rouge National Urban Park is the first urban park uh, in Canadian history. It'll be the largest urban park in a, in a city area like the mm -hmm. GTA mm -hmm. in the world. Um, and we're working right now on trying to develop it uh, um, with Markham's assistance uh, into being just a wonderful park. And uh, it's going to be sort of everything east of the Don Cousins Parkway mm -hmm. in Markham. And one of the things I've introduced, that was, I've been working on it for five years and it, I'm so excited that it's approved. We're, gonna, we're looking at the concept of a gateway. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go, Diane, to um, Banff, if you go to Banff, and many people at Banff National Park, it is one of the greatest parks in the world. You'll go to this town of Banff, and you'll go there, and there's a welcome center, there's restaurants, some hotels, and things like that. Well, this park, Rouge National Urban Park, there's not one hotel, there's not anywhere to stay, there's no uh, retail location whatsoever, uh, you can't buy an ice cream cone, all of these kinds of things. So we said, and I, I suggested, that we have a gateway, and mm -hmm. sort of the east end of Markham, east of the Don Cousin Parkway, is an area of land that we're going to look at as a gateway, the entry feature to the Rouge National Urban Park. Mm -hmm. In about two weeks, we're having a charrette, and we're going to discuss it as to what might go in the gateway. Uh, a charrette is a, a planning process mm -hmm. where you put a whole bunch of people in a room, a lot of round tables, and everybody talks, and they come mm -hmm. up with all these great ideas. You throw a third of the ideas out, and you use the others, and you develop uh, them into mm -hmm. some wonderful thing. And How big is this park going to be? It's, uh, oh, it's going to be, when it's finished, in my view, 20,000 acres. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all the way from Lake Ontario, where the Rouge River uh, uh, goes to the lake uh, in the east end of Toronto, all the way up to the Oak Ridges Moraine and Stouffville. What do you hope this park is going to do for the community? Because it's not only Markham is affected by this park mm -hmm. as well. So what was you, when you were thinking about it, what in your mind, you know, what did you vision about this? Well, it's an area to get people into nature. Um, uh, Toronto is the most diverse GT area, larger mm -hmm. area, um, in, in all of Canada. And many people have come to uh, Toronto from all over the world and have no idea how beautiful Canada is mm -hmm. outside of Toronto. That's correct. Uh, don't, most people don't, need, uh, absolutely, most people don't travel out to other provinces as well. Mm -hmm. They travel out the country. You know, they go to Trinidad, oh, <laughs> the yes. Tomato, I... Barbados, the islands, they go to different places. But yes, and we always say we don't know what's in our backyard. Well, it's... we're going to try and create some of the backyard. Mm -hmm. In Banff, uh, there's mountains. And uh, there's no way that we're going to have mountains in the east end of Toronto Are or the east end of Are you kidding me, Jack? You can't build those mountains? No, uh, the cost is too great. <laughs> I don't think we're going to pay for it in the they taxes. they got some hills, okay. Yeah, we, some well, hills. there are hills and there are valleys and there's lots of trees. Yes. And there'll be lots of walking trails, mm -hmm. uh, aspect of getting into nature, getting down to uh, getting to farms and mm -hmm. uh, uh, seeing how food is grown and things like that. Some recreation as well, more active recreation, camping, things like that. And uh, people will understand. And uh, they have thought, that Parks Canada has thought, that this park can be the gateway to the other national mm -hmm. parks. Now, Algonquin Park is not a national park, yes. but it's Ontario's number one provincial park. And so, why don't you visit Algonquin? Why don't you go visit Banff? It's far off. It's, it's a bit further away. It's a but couple they're gorgeous. Away. It's, 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 Algonquin Park is a bit further away, but we have something that's closer to us. Well, this will be close at hand, yes, definitely and it'll so. be a way to tell people to see the other parks. Mm -hmm. It'll be a way to introduce people to uh, wild Canada, um, mm -hmm. the river valleys and the forests mm -hmm. and the farm communities, etc., etc. And they'll love it. They'll just love it. Absolutely. Well, you know, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come up and talk about nature and parks and spirituality and so forth in the journey because I believe that's something that um, we all have inside of us and we can explore that. So we'll be right back. And we're back and we're here with the Deputy Mayor of the City of Markham, Jack Heath and Jack. You know, we're talking so much about some of the initiatives you have created in your term so far for the city of Markham. But you know, inside of all of that, 
there has to be something that you love and why you do this and why you're in the parks or why it resonates with you and why you're creating this, this, this new project. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what makes you tick, Jack? What mm -hmm. makes you, for that journey, what makes you believe that you're in the right place doing the right thing for everyone else in that job? And that's a loaded question. I grew, no, it's not a loaded <laughs> question. I grew up in Toronto. Yes. However, our family at the age of about 10 or 11 bought a property in Muskoka. And, it's a beautiful place. Uh, beautiful place. Yeah. But it wasn't uh, then like it is now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tourist things and restaurants mm -hmm. and everything you imagine. It was much wilder then mm -hmm. um, and much less developed, but just as beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so on that property, I used to go for long walks. I'd get in the canoe. A paddle across the lake. It wasn't like Muskoka, or else we might still own it, or else, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but the property worth be a great deal of money. Mm -hmm. And then just get out of the canoe and keep on walking. And it was just gorgeous. It was uh, wild Canada. It was Canada. And I think everybody should have a chance um, to see that. And uh, thus the park, Rouge National Urban Park, will be somewhat the same. Mm -hmm. It'll get people out of the city and into a place where they can realize when people discovered Canada 500 years ago, 400 years ago, this is what they saw. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the rivers, this is what it looks like. And in October and November, the colors are all orange and red mm -hmm. and uh, yellow and that kind of stuff. It's gorgeous. And I think everyone in Canada should understand what their birthright is. Mm -hmm. Because it is their birthright, although they may not have been born here. It's they now live in this country, they own a part of this country. They should understand it and they'd love it. And so the more people, I met for example, uh, a group up in Muskoka uh, about two years ago on Civic Holiday Weekend. Mm -hmm. They'd taken a bus and uh, it was a, um, uh, I think it was a synagogue. I can't remember mm -hmm. what it was. They'd never been north of Steeles or mm -hmm. they'd never been north of, let's say, Aurora. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all the rocks, the lakes and everything. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. No idea. Mm -hmm. And I'd be willing to bet uh, three or four weeks later they were going to be back again. Yes, absolutely. I mean, if you go up north, we talk about, um, you know, and it does something to you when you, you go out in nature, it does. You know, we have the Mata Shrine and so forth up in Midland area as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know that, that Pope actually stayed there. So a lot of people go back there because it's so symbolic. But it, it does something to mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. as well, the nature, obviously, and it recharges us mm -hmm. as well. Um, and does that something that resonates with you oh, growing up? Oh, very much so. Very much so, and I think it resonates with all people. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't, uh, our ancestors didn't come from big cities. They came from small communities, uh, agricultural communities or what have you. They're very close to nature. Mm -hmm. uh, they're quite accustomed to seeing various wildlife mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, going off for a walk to either go hunting or looking for more water or who knows, whatever. Mm -hmm. They were quite accustomed to it. It's built into the human spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important. This park is going to be the, the largest or the most attractive park in the Parks Canada system. Mm -hmm. now, there'll be more people go to it than any other park after 10 or 15 years in all of Canada. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's right next to the GTA. It's inside uh, the east end of the GTA. Mm -hmm. And tours, I mean, you go, can, want to come to Toronto, get on a bus tour, it will include the park. It mm -hmm. will include the gateway I'm talking about mm -hmm. because people will want to go and they'll come, they have an ice cream, they'll go to the Welcome Center and they'll go off on a hike or they'll see the birds across the street, a whole bunch of things like that. You know, my suggestion of that is, um, you know, we talk about the, the, the elements that, you know, recharges us, you know, that the fire, earth, water, uh, land, so forth. Incorporate that in there so people have a reason to go out where they can be, you know, we can go to the bluffs and just look at the water and it helps recharge us. So have something incorporated that way we can actually go on the spiritual journey there as well. Food for thought, I'll eh, take the, I'll take the note <laughs> down, I'll, I'll take it to the committee. So tell me, on the fun part now, what's your favorite books? Like what, what type of books do you like to read to make oh, mystery Jack... mystery stories. Mystery, what does that do for you? Well, uh, it just stimulates the mind. You try and think of exactly. a clue in the world, in it? Yeah. And you know what I've taken up is audiobooks. Yes. Audiobooks. I now go to the Martin Public Library. They got a ton of them. They got a wall of audiobooks in every library. They have five or six mm -hmm. libraries. And I just get a new author and I put it in in the car and I drive. And uh, usually mystery stories. Uh, so it's a mystery story it? university. 
on wheels. <laughs> yes, sort of like on my wheel, our wheels. That's what it is, that's and that's it. what I do. Mm -hmm. I have read, uh, read every Agatha Christie uh, mm -hmm. book uh, mm -hmm. that she ever wrote, and I have a terrible memory, just a terrible memory. Uh, and so I can't remember after about two years did I ever hear this or read this mm -hmm. so I can listen to it again. Absolutely. It, it really helps that way. And you know, I have read certain books as well, not as many, you know, multiple times. I have people who read it over and over and over because every time you read it, it's something else. It's something else you hear, something else you pick up, you didn't hear it the first time. Hopefully you were driving and paying attention, Jack, <laughs> but we talk about that. <laughs> Some but, truth. but there is, um, there's so much with what you're doing in the community, even this project and some of the projects you've done, that people don't realize it's not, it comes from an idea. It comes from someone. And this at least a mentors, you want to make sure your legacy is there and you made your mark. I know it's not a single project, I understand that, okay? But I never think of legacy. I know, but this is what you're doing, Jack. Well, it may very well be, but I don't think about it. What I think of is what's best for the community, what would pu the yes. public want us to do, how do you build the city of Markham? Mm -hmm. People have great pride in the city of Markham. People, how can we make it even better? Absolutely. And uh, if I retire, and some people say that you've got a legacy, so much the better, but I don't think about it. I, it doesn't, never crosses my mind. No, we're not doing it because it's a legacy. We do because we want to leave a legacy, and in our back of our minds, I we know. do. But this is not what you're me, doing. Uh, no, I never think about it. No, but at the back of people's mind, who know, and this is one of the things we will be talking about too, is people don't know where all of these, you know, I mean, your grandkids or grandkids, kids, kids, were saying, oh, this is my grandpa. Having so no far. kids, I could not have any grandkids. <laughs> well, your nieces and nephews <laughs> and family. But you understand what I'm saying? This is what we're here for. And you've done amazing, mm -hmm. amazing what you're doing with all these initiatives. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're always amazing to be around, trust me, it's always fun to be around you as well. I, mean, we really I appreciate it, that. but I don't think of it that way. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't at all. Uh, mm -hmm. How can you get better? How can yes. you improve what you have now so that tomorrow people yes. will say, boy, these, this park is nice. Yes. Boy, do we have a good waste management system. Boy, yes. have we improved the budget so that yes. uh, we have great accountability or what have you. And I work, I'm work i on the budget committee mm -hmm. and we've been working for the last two or three weeks on the mm -hmm. budget. How do you make sure these processes are better mm -hmm. so we're not wasting money so that we're, we're spending it properly and improving the lives of the average resident? Well, if we need to get in touch with, you know, your office, you know, is there a, a, a contact website that we can get in touch with you to find out more about these initiatives? <laughs> well, they can always uh, send me an email, jheath at markham.ca. That's how people get me. Mm -hmm. And quite often it's better than a phone call because I'm not there. I'm in <laughs> meetings after meeting after meeting. But an yes. uh, email, uh, that Blackberry works uh, wherever you are. <laughs> I know, and I use it all the time. I know, I know. So do I. So do I, I. I've never understood this business. There's some people don't like Blackberries. I love it. It's the best thing ever invented in me. because it's a keypad. <laughs> oh, yes, it's got a keypad. It's just perfect for me. Just yeah. perfect. I know. I feel the same way. But I want to thank you so much for joining us and tell us a little bit about you know, what you've done. Um, I, I believe all of you guys are mentors and leaders and heroes in my eyes of what you're doing to make it a better <laughs> place for us, my kids, my kid kids, you know, your nieces and every family. And we don't think about what we're doing, but in the back end, we're here for a reason. So I want to thank you so much for sitting thank you. with me and you know, sharing this time and being very open about what you're doing. And I really appreciate all you've done for us as well. And we will continue as well working. So I want to say to everyone, this is a new concept, and I want everyone there to know that, you know, look at everybody as a hero, a mentor, or leader. Because inside of all of us, there's so much greatness that, you know, takes everyone to the next level. So until next time, you know, be safe and protect yourself.